بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علی و صحبہ و سلم اما بعد ایو الاحباب The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said لا تزل طائفة من امتی ظاہرین حق حتى يأتيهم امر الله وهم على ذلك وفي رواية لا تزل طائفة من امتی ظاہرین على الحق لا يضرهم من خالفهم ولا من خضلهم حتى تكم السعى وكما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اي الاحباب The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, There will not cease to be a group from amongst my ummah, and this is in Sahih Muslim, that continues to be on the truth. No one will harm them who differs with them or tries to deceive them until the day of judgment that no one will harm them so ayul ahbab we can see that when we face the various challenges to our faith from outside of islam and within the ranks of the muslims as well of people who differ with the aqidah and creed and minhaj of ahl sunnah wal jamaah And people whose fiqh related to the religion has no relationship with the early uh, generations and the early uh, ulama, the scholars of Islam. For example, one of the trials that we faced here as a test, in the West especially, is we have fatwa running, uh, it's widespread in America and Canada and other places, where you have so-called ulama saying that it's a necessity And out of, out of what is they perceive as a necessity, that you can take interest. When Allah makes war on the person, it makes interest. So first, we should go back to the Qur'an and go back to the Sunnah and realize, read all of those punishments related to riba. And which one of us wants to have war with Allah Azza wa Jal? Which one of you can stand in that battle? Not a human being, not anything that was created. So ayul ahbab. No matter what you hear and no matter what you experience, strive your utmost to go back to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what the Salaf of this Ummah was upon and realize that no matter all the differences that you see and witness and all of the attempts to harm you in your body, in your persons, in your lives, your wealths, and your property. That that can only happen by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that this is going to be the situation for Ahlul Sunnah. And Ahlul Sunnah must continue to be on that path. And that real harm as far as destroying Ahlul Sunnah, it won't happen. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, لا تزل طائفة من أمتي أظاهرين الحق There won't cease to be a group of, uh, from my nation that will be holding on to the truth. No one will hurt them, even if they differ with them, until the Day of Judgment. Doesn't mean that there won't be some who will die. That doesn't mean that some who won't be physically harmed and spiritually broke down even, and, and, and all of the other ways in which a person can be harmed. But it means that Ahl Sunnah, a Mu'min in general, will still be, they'll still be around, no matter where they may be. So make sure that you're amongst them, that you're holding on, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرْقُوا Hold on to the rope of Allah, all of you together, and do not divide. Do not be of the different sects and groups. And don't take false interpretation. Don't follow misinterpretation. When people try to tell you that Allah is everywhere, meaning in His, His being is everywhere, or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we negate some of His, His divine names and attributes. La! Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
gave us in the Quran guidance and described himself subhanahu wa ta'ala as ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and described himself subhanahu wa ta'ala as rising above his throne. So Ahl Sunnah says that Allah rose above his throne in a manner that suits his majesty. We don't know how, but in a manner that suits his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ahl Sunnah says that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms about himself, we affirm. Whatever he negates about himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala, we negate. And whatever the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirmed and negated in his authentic sunnah, then we, we follow that. Because we believe in the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the aqidah and da'wah to Ahl sunnah. And this is the aqidah of Ahl hadith and the minhaj of Ahl hadith and why the ulama, when they explain that, like Hafidh ibn Hajr well, and, and, and other than him, when he described the hadith that we mentioned, La tazal ta'ifatu min umati dhari la haq, he said, that, that group that's continued on the truth, it can't be anyone except Ahl hadith Letting us know those people who adhere to the ahadith of the Prophet وسلم, and especially the ulama, especially those who made ihtimam of the sciences of hadith, that those are the ones on the sabil of mu'mineen and laying down that path for us that we, we can gra- gra- grasp a, a strong uh, handhold. Why? Because they were adhering to the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, And when differences came to him, they went back to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, following the hadith. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Ittaqullah wa sam'i wa ta'ah wa in abdin habashiyan fa man ya'ish minkum min ba'di fa sayyara ikhtilafin kathira fa alaykum bi sunnati. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Fear Allah and listen and obey even if the leader was an Ethiopian slave. And those who live after me will see many differences. Look at the differences. Differences in interpretation, differences in minhaj, differences in path, different in methodology. These ones say go khuruj of 40 days, go to Pakistan and, 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 and authenticate your dawah. These ones say that it's only through political revolution and we should make change through this way and through parliamentary elections and so forth. This group, they say this. This one says we should be extreme and fight and kill and, and make bloodshed. But the Prophet والسلام, said, when you come to this time and you see all these differences, it's upon you my sunnah. That's the prescription. That's the medicine. That's the ilaj. That's the medicine for that differences. Go back to the sunnah. Did the Prophet والسلام, allow, did, did the Quraysh and, and, and did the, 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 the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, during the time of the Prophet والسلام, did, was that a necessity that they needed to make uh, that they needed to take riba for, for, to, to, to attain property? And they were being persecuted and the riba was made haram. But now we have it easy. It is not a necessity for you to have a, to have a house. It's not a necessity. But it's a necessity that you have shelter. And rent in America, I can speak about. In Canada, I know, and I'm familiar a little bit with the UK, that there's plenty of places to rent. Even though your capital, you feel like you lost your capital. But that's not what's a necessity in Islam. So, ayah al beware of false interpretation. Beware of sabil, ghayr mu'mineen. Beware of the way and the methodology of other than the believers. Other than the, the, the tariqah and the path of Ahl sunnah And may Allah bless us to be of Ahl sunnah And may Allah bless us with ikhlas, with the bad Ahl sunnah Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.